Let's do some technique-based Q&A, shall we? Uh, what move should you make, if any, if you're pinned down by multiple people? That's going to depend on positioning. It's going to depend on where you are. It's going to depend on where your opponent or your opponents are. So if we turn this on, boom, look at this cool little technical window deal we've got here. So we'll say for funsies here and here, we'll say that you are in this building. You are the player that is the circle with a red line through it. Uh, opponent building, opponent building, opponent building, opponent, opponent, opponent. Blue denotes windows and green denotes doorways. So let's say this specific scenario, right, which happens pretty often where you just kind of pin from all angles. There's, generally speaking, I always yell at players about forward pressure to keep pushing, to keep the pressure on the opposite team and to keep someone on their heels. But that's very, uh, it's very generic but it, I don't want to give people the impression that it's wrong. That it's necessarily wrong to go backwards. There's nothing wrong with egressing and falling back to a better position if it can be more advantageous for you. So if I'm this player, there's nothing wrong with me going through this doorway into this building uh, and, changing, and just kind of minimizing my exposure. There's a number of things that you can do. So you can... Essentially, based on this, we can change our position or we can wait, tuck back into a corner and wait for them to come to us. Uh, so you could, depending on what you wanted to do, you could hide in this deep corner. You could hide in this deep corner. You could try and go low, depending on what this building is, how tall this building is. And basically just pick a deep corner and uh, corner pop. And just start, uh, what, what am I thinking? Snapshot. But that requires you to be able to shoot right and left-handed, assuming you're using a long gun, which most players generally are. It requires you to shoot right and left-handed and be proficient at everything involved in snap shooting, which in the real-world shooting world, we just call shooting from the barricaded position or shooting from cover. That's it. It's possible, depending on the skill proficiency of your opponent's, it's possible to take them all out with this. Or if we're talking about general play and you have other teammates, you can start stalling for time and waiting for your teammates to help you out. Start calling for assistance uh, or just start like returning real aggressive fire and really start, if your field allows that, and just start suppressing each window uh, using your corner game, using your your snapshot game and just waiting for dudes to pop their face out into your window so you do have options that's what i would recommend that's what i would do uh hide that's what i recommend that's what i would do next question boop looking for the questions that pertain to the thing how to deal with someone camping a deep corner while they're expecting you to come in. Uh, already you kind of answered your question. When they're expecting you. So if, if your opponent is expecting you to perform an action, you have to first of all not do that action. The element of surprise is always in your advantage. If someone is in a deep corner, depending on the building layout, generally that means that they can't see anything other than that little piece of doorway or entryway that they're expecting you to come into. Uh, so the you can nade it. I don't use nades. Excuse me. I don't like using grenades. I never plan on using grenades because in my opinion, using a grenade just means you suck at using a rifle. If if I can't take them out with a gun with a with a point weapon, then they've they've created an they've created a scenario that I need to practice. Does that that make sense? That's why I don't like using grenades. I'm not faulting those that do. There are some guys that just love grenades because they just like going, wee, <laughs> cool, groovy. If you like nades, you like nades. My personal opinion is I don't use them because I 
I shouldn't need to. I shouldn't you to need I should not need to use a grenade when a rifle will be just as good. I cannot think of a scenario where I would not be able to use a rifle. I would have to use a grenade. I can't think of one of those scenarios. Does that does that kind of make sense? Uh, hit me up in the comments if you don't agree with that and give me a scenario you would think of that counters that opinion. Did I say that correctly? More or less. Anyway. Deal with someone in a deep corner. Flank them. Uh, it requires you to know that building layout. And if they're if they're expecting you, you need to not do that. You just need to do something unexpected. Usually, it is to flank them and come at them from a different angle that they're not recognizing. Uh, that requires a great amount of skill because it generally requires a player that would require you to get behind them, which means you have to get closer to his team, his or her team, and then kind of come in through the way that he came in. Does that make sense? That's how you would do that. But again, that requires a great amount of skill because then you have to eliminate every player on the way from your point to where he's at. Does that make sense? That's how I would do it. And here we are with more questions. I tried to sort some of these out. But some of them were just ridiculous. No. Sneaky tactics or proper flank specifically at ministry. So the way I almost always play is I run the perimeter. Usually. Usually I like to run the perimeter. Uh, depending on the field, depending on what's going on. I like to run the perimeter or run the wall or run the outside of a field uh, because if I'm running, if I am running along the left limit line of a field, I do not have to worry about what is to my left. If I'm in the middle, then I have to essentially worry about everything around me. If I'm running a wall, then I don't have to worry about one. That that's an entire side I don't have to worry about. Does that make sense? Uh, so that's how. That's usually how I will get all of my flanks and my sweeps in. Is I will run the perimeter. And just take it from there. And I just run the wall. That's that's the way I like to play. Uh, sometimes I will go up the center. Again, usually depending on what's going on with the field. Because most players are generally afraid to play a center position. Because they're, they're, they're afraid of the close engagement. So they're still um, timid in their play, in their movements. They're not a very aggressive player. They kind of haven't really figured a lot of things out, and they really don't know how to move in tight CQB spaces, which is where I like to think I capitalize in most players, or capitalize on from against most players, because they don't know they don't know how to take corners. They don't know how to move. They only play like one shoulder. They'll do like I have my shoulder here, but I'm still like leaning to this side, and it's just chaos. They don't know what they're doing. Sneaky tactics. There's no real, my opinion, there's no such thing as a sneaky tactic. It's just a matter of how solid are your fundamentals and how do you apply them from position to position. Uh, there's really no, no such thing I can think of that I would consider a sneaky tactic. It's just solid application of fundamentals and beating other players to improve your position. That's it. Next. How to effectively sweep without crossfire? Uh, I'm guessing by what you mean with crossfire is how do you sweep without potentially shooting your own teammates, depending on what your position is. Crossfire, and if this were a real steal, like if we were going over active shooter tactics, I would tell you that anytime you shoot someone other than a threat, it's your fault because you're always in charge of your trigger. Uh, and, and there's a lot of guys that have tried to argue that point with me, and they have so far failed. Uh, in Airsoft, it's a little different because of the speed of the projectile. So it's not uncommon for me to shoot to be in like a straight line. Okay. It's not uncommon for me to be let's say I'm this glass 
No, that's not very tall. Let's say I'm this tall. Here we go. I got a plan. I got a plan. I got a plan. Okay. I'm the short magazine, right? And I have a direct line of sight. I'm a, a straight shot to the tall, to the extended magazine. So let's say because of the speed of the projectile, the extended magazine moves, and now I'm shooting at the deodorant. That's that that'll happen because of the speed of the projectile. Uh, because as we've every player has almost always experienced that a play one player shooting at another in front of you, that player moves his head or moves to the side, and you take those BBs because you didn't react quick enough or you didn't know that that was happening. That's just the speed of the projectile. Uh, so one thing to really cut down on crossfire or friendly fire is awareness awareness of where your team is and aware trying to anticipate where they are going to go and being cognizant that you're not sending bbs in that area it's also usually usually let's say we're in a crossfire scenario of de depending on a number of things usually what is happening is you're trying to take up too much of a sector of fire so you're trying to shoot at kids like from on the other side of the field just because you see them and you want to shoot them and that's your natural reaction reaction when you kind of should be trusting that your other teammates, which are probably garbage anyway, are going to be taking those guys out. So limit yourself to a sector of fire, maybe about, depending on what you're using, 15 yards if you're going on a sweep, depending on how fast you're moving, depending on the field layout. Limit yourself to a mid-range sector of fire and ignore everything that's far range. If there's kids shooting at me from... Uh, like 70, 50, anywhere from 50 to 100 feet away, I don't even run because I know that there's no way that those BBs are going to hit me Excuse me. in the amount of times that it takes for me to go from here to here. That's The physics aren't going to work because they're not leading me. They're not shooting where I'm going to be. They're shooting at where I'm at in that current piece of time. Does that make sense? Is this starting to sound like an episode of Star Talk? What's Star Talk? How dare you? What else we got here? Did that one? Did that one? Nades versus pre-firing. Um, in general, I personally am not of the opinion that pre-firing is a cheater's tactic because if that's the case, then if I throw a grenade into a room and I don't watch what the grenade does, to me that's blind fire. To me it's, to me it's the same. To me there's no difference in that. It's just a personal opinion. Um, I guess I could do a video on that topic separately, but it'd just be kind of, yeah, whatever. I guess I guess I could do it on that. Put put in the comments if you want me to explain why I believe that grenades can fall along the same lines as either blind firing or in the same realm of pre-firing is cheating in that same realm. Anyway, uh, I just gave my opinion on grenades, why I don't use them. I don't believe that pre-firing is a cheater's tactic. I don't believe that is a blind fire tactic, but it is also dependent upon what your field specific definition of blind firing and, and cheating tactics are. Here's my gun, right? The ASM definition for blind firing. I'm pointing, I point my gun and I'm looking at my target at the same time. This is not blind firing. This is blind firing. This is blind firing because I am not looking at where my target is. Now, there are some fields that consider hip firing to be blind firing. Okay, that's fine. There are some fields that will say blind firing means you are anytime you are blind to a target, which is fine because in that specific definition, pre-firing would be considered blind firing because you don't have a target that you're intentionally shooting at. You're just shooting while you're moving. That's it. That's fine. That is it. To me, that is an acceptable definition of blind firing relating it to pre-firing because it meets the defined definition. The defined definition? Is that a thing? That's fine. But it it's foundation. The pre-firing's foundation, for me, in my opinion, is dependent upon if what a field defines as blind firing. Does that, does that make sense? So in the airsoft ministry, pre-firing is legal. Does that make sense? Because you don't need to be shooting at, you don't need to see a target before you shoot at it. That, 
That's what suppressive fire is. That's what covering fire is. So pre-firing really to me is just uh, an airsoft version of suppressive fire or covering fire. It's the same thing. To me, it falls within the same realm. Does that, that make sense? Use it if your field allows it. If your field specifically prohibits it, then you have no business using that technique because on that field it is considered cheating. And I don't condone people breaking rules during gameplay. That's not cool. Does that, that make sense? Okay. But if you can use it, use it. It's a game. It's a gamer's tactic. Now, pre-firing in the, amongst the non-gaming community, amongst the, the realism-embracing community, no, no one would do that. You would never pre-fire as a cop. You would go to prison if you did that. Some of us may or may not have pre-fired while we were overseas. Overseas is a different ball game. Overseas, we were firing warning shots. You don't do that stuff in the States. So, um, it, it defaults to your field. If you can use it, just use it. I love use. I pre-fire. Not a whole lot, but I pre-fire when I get kind of bored or if I think someone's in there or if I want to... Uh, create a specific clip where I can address that. I don't pre-fire a whole lot because I just, whatever. Um, I don't like to pre-fire all the time because if you hear my gun shooting, you know my position and you know what I'm doing. So, in, so it, in my opinion, it, it leaves a more experienced player. Uh, it, it, you can be pre-firing can be countered by an experienced player in a deep corner. So if I'm pre-firing through a door and I have a, an experienced player in a deep corner, he's just going to wait till I come through the door because the angle that I'm using for pre-firing isn't going to reach that player fast enough than the angle he's going to use to take me out. So there's that. No one brings that up because everyone just wants to say, well, it's cheating. Boom. End of discussion. Like, no, just counter it. Just learn how to play the deep corner game. Noobs. Noobs. Where's that big old screenshot I had? Dude, dude, dude. That's not it. That's screenshots. Here's my file. Ver ist it. Aha. Ooh, not doing that one. What is a good way to plan tactics with people you don't know? Honestly, if I don't know them, usually you can get a sense for how proficient a player is within the first few moments of watching them play. Like just pay attention to their movements and their manipulations and the way that they're interacting and responding and reacting. Uh, if I think they're noobish, I'm just going to tell them, hey, go through and go through the door and see if it's clear. Okay. Like, oh, there's there's a guy out there. Okay, time to pop the corner. Usually, I don't like playing with, I don't like doing st stuff with newer or inexperienced players because in my experience, most of them don't know what they're doing. So if I'm on the field and if I'm not playing with, like, with my friends or the guys that I know are experienced players, I ignore my entire team. Because I just assume they're going to get in my way. Is that a nice thing to say? Not really. No. It's kind of mean. It's kind of rude. Is it honest? Yeah. If I'm playing, I want to win. I don't do this on like, we're going to play for fun. Like, not a whole lot. Eh, sometimes, maybe. Sometimes. But if I'm on the field, I want to win. Because I want to... Be the best at whatever I'm doing whenever I'm doing it. That best may not be that great depending on what I'm doing. But I'm still going to... I want to put 100% of my attention and my my energies... Excuse me. Into everything I do. I don't want to be around people that are going to hold me back or drag me down. So, that's why. What are some more complicated tactics... Um, let me look. I think I DM'd this guy a while ago. Hold, please. Nope, that's not it. Uh, mm -mm, <laughs> no, 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 no. That one. Yes. 
Go there. Go there. Aha! What are some more complicated tactics uh, other than, like, leapfrogging and clearing rooms? Uh, to cl so I, I asked for clarification from this guy. Uh, I am often at a loss when it comes to close quarter situations or finding a way to move forward while under fire with a large group of people. Thanks for taking the time. Give more details. It's very considerate of you. Thanks, buddy. Uh, first of all, you shouldn't be with a large group of people. If you're legit... Generally speaking, if you are with a large group of people, you are just with a large group of guys that are going to get shot real fast. Here's what usually happens. A large group of people moving to the same location, and they all just keep like doing this huge, like, this guy takes this angle, and this guy takes this angle, this guy. It only takes a maximum of two people to hold down an angle. Any more than that, and no one knows what they're doing. So generally speaking, right off from what you've just told me, First of all, don't be with a large group of people. I, I don't. I don't like playing with large groups of people. If I see there is a large group of players over here, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do my own thing. Or I'm going to go with a smaller group of people that I know and trust and like to play with. It's just personal opinion. Uh, often at a loss when it comes to close quarter situations or finding a way to move forward while under fire. I would have to see... Your level of abilities, meaning I would have to see your play style to really under get a, a full grasp of what you're talking about. Generally speaking, even though even though you're like other than like leapfrog, that's kind of a foundation. You can't really get no boxer can get away from like all right. Other than the jab, like bro, that's a fundamental thing. Uh, so leapfrog is a, is a foundation, whether or not people are proficient in it is an entirely different question leapfrog and clear rooms if you look at what most teams do in cqb not like real teams swat teams like your platoons your fire teams stuff like that you just leap you clear a room you leapfrog to the next and you just keep going you clear this room in this room in this room that's the forward pressure that you apply however the challenge comes in is you and whatever group you're with versus your opponent, either the amount of players or the amount of skill that those players have. That's that's the fight. That's the struggle, uh, is being able to push them out of a dominant position or out of a position in general. The entire time you are playing, you need to be thinking about improving your position as far as you can go on that field up until the point where you start to run into like a, a spawn camp issue. If you can get to that point before it come, becomes a spawn camping issue, hold it and just see how many you can get. And then you, you win. That's That should be what you're going for. Your objective when you play most TDM, most deathmatch style, most those 10 versus those 10, most elimination style team deathmatch gameplays, your objective should be to get as close to the spawn point as you can without breaking the spawn restriction rules. And you just stay there and make that other team start yelling at each other. And you get in their head. And you start getting them like, hey, let's go, let's do this. Like, oh, they're trying to rally because that whole team is failing at eliminating me, the one player that is in a super advantageous position. That should be your mindset the whole time. Now, to get there, you have to just leapfrog and clear and clear and clear and leapfrog and clear and leapfrog and clear. That's what you're doing the whole time. Or you that's where your, your mind should be. That's all the questions I have for now. I will open. You can leave comments. Excuse me. You can leave questions in the comments or just DM me on Instagram for the next time I do this at ASM underscore Caber, C-A-B-E-R. It's right. Hang on. Hang, oh, hang on. This thing. That's my Instagram. Uh, which would be weird because everyone mostly that watches my videos comes from Instagram anyway. But uh, I'll probably do another one of these, I don't know, maybe about a month or so. So start posting in the comments what your specific questions are for tactics. Let me tell you some of the ones that didn't quite make the cut. Stand by, please. Bloop. Bloop. Um, this guy wishes more kids would pie. That's not really a. I love you. You know I love you. 
that didn't really pertain to the question I'd asked. That was more of like a complaint. Like it, it's a legitimate complaint. Uh, what's a, a couple guys asked about like real steel recommendations. That's okay. I answered that like individually. Like that's not really pertaining to the question that I asked. Um, that's pretty much it. So there's that. So.